Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Welcome everyone to the video games that were released at some time in October 1982. Come. And it looks like we've got something on the TV. This is the new Atari Super System. Oh, something new. Atari Super System. You may like the Super System better. It has some of the best arcade and sports games. And plays Looks every almost Atari like the arcade. Oh, look, the adapter is coming soon. <laughs> it's Judy. It lets you freeze. Yeah. Who's Judy? Oh, Judy. The new 5200 yes. Super System. It's finally here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the release or initial release of the Atari 5200 Super System. They've been calling it the Super System. We've seen magazine ads for it. At this point, if you had an Atari 2600 or VCS, you could have played around 159 video games, at least here on the show. That's the total amount of video games that are available for the Atari 2600. And we finally have the newest release. This is the next evolution of Atari. It's possible that a few people got this game at some time in October for the very first uh, first release of the Atari 5200. The mainstream release that was released all over North America is going to be in November, but this is the very first time you could ever see this system or play this system, and the game that was released for that is... Our very next game is Super Breakout for the Atari 5200. The very first game that you could get, it was packed in with the Atari 5200. Let's play some Super Breakout. Not that we haven't done that before. We we played Super Breakout. <laughs> this this packing game isn't anything special. Here's the box for Super Breakout. Ooh. They're going with a blue color scheme here for the Atari 5200. Man, this looks way too new. Looks <laughs> This box looks brand new for Super Breakout. Uh, Breakout shouldn't be new to anybody else. This is the sixth game. That's the official Breakout game in the series. And we've seen Breakout since the arcade in September uh, 1978. Uh, at least Super Breakout was. So uh, Breakout's been even older than that. But Super Breakout's been here for a while. Take a look at the back of the box. They show you a picture of the screen shot. And then look at this. 16 video game variations. And it does say 1 to 4 players. You have to use the Atari 5200 controllers and the game cartridge. And it is trackball compatible. And that's right. This is the system that has the official trackball that you could be using to play the game. Wow. Incredible. What other artwork do we have for Super Breakout on the Atari 5200? <laughs> uh, we also have a few different boxes or variations of boxes. Oh, there it is. The, the sleek design of the 5200. This system is massive. The, the, this console it is huge compared to the Atari 2600. And the power adapter, I don't know if anyone remembers that giant brick. There's the cartridge we're going to pop into the Atari 5200 to play. Very nice. Yes. We also have the manual for people that don't know how to play Super Breakout. How do you play? So we've already seen Super Breakout and the history of Breakout. This is the sixth official Breakout of all the Breakouts you can be playing up to this point. There are variations that aren't official Breakouts. At this time from Chronologically Gaming, we've played 59 other games that are pretty close to Breakout, but not official Breakout. After we saw the arcade release in 1978, then we had Super Breakout on the Atari home computer in December 1979. And then it, Super Breakout was released for the Atari 2600 in November 1981. And now, uh, uh, there's also been an unofficial VIC-20 version of Super... It was called Super Breakout, but it wasn't real by Solar Software. Oh, man. All right, so here we go. How do we play this? Table of Contents. <laughs> I hope it doesn't chip tune. Uh, we did see Su Super Breakout, or one of the breakouts had lore or a story behind. Oh my gosh, it does. Blast through space. You're the pilot of a super powered space shuttle. You're blazing a path through distant superclusters at incredible space age speed. The uncharted planet <laughs> Laris, planet Laris is, or Iris is your destination. You know from preliminary briefing that Iris is surrounded by a mysterious colorful force field. Ah, the colorful first force field. That's what they get you. <laughs> <laughs> you called it, Chip Tune. It happens to have a story. Oh my gosh, yes. If you want to pause and read the entire lore, here it is for Super Breakout on the Atari 5200. We're going to Iris. 
a brilliant band of color flashes into view, more startling and impressive than any of the photos you saw back on Earth. Your hands eagerly grip the controls as you prepare to blast through or break through. So the gameplay is just, we have a few different game modes. We have a cavity, we have breakout, we have a double, and we have progressive. And we've seen this before on the other super breakouts. You have a, a section for game variations if you want to. The object of the game is to keep as many balls in play, scoring the highest score possible, or score as many points as your opponent. Now, bear in mind, we've seen 59 other games that play very close to Breakout. And there is this is the sixth game in the Breakout series. This formula for us is not new whatsoever. It is, this explains the score breakdown. you got to get those points in 1982. In double and cavity, it's possible to score double or triple points. And we have different game variations as well. Now, here it is. We have to talk about the Atari 5200 controller. That's the one. This is a analog joystick and a number pad. So we've seen controllers that have uh, number pads and joysticks attached to it. Majority of them are digital, and some of them have overlays like the Mattel and Television. This joystick is actually very close to another system or console that we played called the Interton VC4000. And that was named other things in other regions, but that was the only other console that used an analog joystick and a number pad. But this is the very first console to have the analog joystick and the number pad with an overlay. And here it is. Look, this is the, the keypad overlay <laughs> for Super Breakout. All it is is a button for extra games. And then if you want to have one to four players or game select, I mean, that's it. So this overlay, while it said Super Breakout, it really isn't that flashy. And you can't play with four people, but I, I'm sad to say you don't play simultaneous. This isn't four player at the same time. We, we can play Warlord right now on the Atari 2600 four player. You can't play four players for this. There's the player selection screen, game selection screen. We have special options if you want. Some of the special options include easier modes, more challenging modes. And you can push start to begin the game. Another thing about the, the controller is the start and pause are all on the controller. You don't have to lean forward to the console to, to, to use it. And that's a big plus for the Atari 2600. But these controllers are, these joysticks are prone to be uh, broken and not function for, for very long. Maybe if you got the trackball, that would be even better. <laughs> yeah, the, art, the overlay doesn't even have any artwork uh, tied to it either. So it explains how to serve the ball extra serves, and it even shows you a little bit about how the English works to get the ball to flip or rotate in different ways. I know we should have done that. That should have been the pack-in. I'm with you there, Chiptune. Why they did Super Breakout, I don't know. And bear in mind, this has been advertised, and we've seen pictures of this earlier this year, I believe since February. We check out magazines here on the show too, and magazines have shown the Super System. They didn't call it the 5200 yet, but they had plenty of time. I don't know. So we also have the trackball option if you want to play that or the paddle option. So this has paddles, this has the joystick, and it has the trackball. Lots of different ways that you can play. This explains a little, a little graph where the, the ball is going to be going off the paddle where you hit it. That's good to know, but we've seen that since like Video Olympics on the Atari 2600. So here's our game variations. This breaks, breaks down what breakout is like what uh, the breakout scores go, and then some helpful hints. As usual, Atari gives us lots of those. Don't panic, anticipate. And they have a few things to get your, write down your best scores. That's the manual for the very first game you could play on the Atari 5200. Let's pop in that cartridge and play some Super Breakout. This is by Atari, released at some time in October, most likely late October, 1982. If you were one of the lucky ones to get the very first console and the game. Now, this marks the 143rd game that's been made by Atari. Here on Chronological Evening, that's a lot of Atari games, including all platforms. That's what we've seen so far by Atari. And this is going to be a ball and paddle style game. I'm going to start with just a normal breakout game. You can see how flashy it is. Put start on our controller and let's go. Ooh, the analog joystick. I think you just push, yeah, push the button on the right side, and then you're in. And it's super breakout. That's it. Ooh. Very, very simple. The only, the, the thing that drives me up the wall is it's, it's four player, and some of these consoles even had four slots for four joysticks. 
but you can't play four people at the same time. You have to alternate turns. It, 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 it's crazy. Yes, can can everyone see the difference between this and the 2600? I'm going to include a link of Super Breakout on the Atari 2600 and see if you can tell. Or actually, should can you tell the difference between this and the Atari, the Super Breakout on the Atari 400 and Atari 800 home computers? <laughs> yes, it was a massive console, Ubicore. It's, it's just crazy. I'm just amazed that they have this as the game that they pack in with it. Just too many amazingness things happening right now. It does going to pick up speed. And we do have other game variations if we want to play those too. Like um, there's the progressive mode. This one just continues on over and over and over again. Like the screen scrolls down slowly as you play. It goes on forever. The choice to choose this as the pack-in and we're playing this as the newest game on the newest Atari system is another kind of subtle hint that something's gone awry at Atari or, or something's ha going to happen with the consoles for video games here in North America. The way that you do a pack-in is how the ColecoVision did it. They put Donkey Kong in. That's the way to go. Yes, go, 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 go. Yes, why did they learn from Coleco? Coleco already did the, the right thing. Go, go, go. Crazy breakout. And then we, if we want to, there's double, which uh, I think just has yeah two pads instead of the other one. Multiple balls in play. Just showing off a few of the different game modes, but we've already seen all of this before. And there's been other variations of breakout too. So... Honestly, uh, for someone who's played lots and lots of Breakout, this one would not be impressive, es especially if you already owned or were familiar with the Atari home computer. This one, th this whole system, the Atari 5200, could be described as a Atari 400 in disguise. It has a lot of the very the, the same functionality. If you uh, crack open the hood and you compare the memory processor uh, video chip, the the GTIAs inside of it. I mean, just if, if you're a techie into the specs, it's really, really close to the Atari 400. <laughs> and we haven't seen it yet, Chiptune. <laughs> the, the Purina run hasn't caused the crash yet. Maybe that'll be the downfall. It's not going to be Pac-Man, or it's not going to be the game we're going to be playing later involving a little alien. Maybe it'll be the Purina game. <laughs> All right, and then the, la the other one we also have is Cavity that you can also play too. If you want to do multiple players, you can see I can switch between one, two, three, and four players. But if I say go, like if I start the game now, it just says, oh, the player one's turn is going. Um, two, three, and four, your friends that came for the, the, the Super Breakout Party on the brand new Atari 5200 system, they have to wait their turn. And right now you could be playing simultaneous Video Olympics on the Atari uh, VCS. You could be playing Warlord. I mean, I'm, th there's so many other four-player games you could be playing. I just imagine four people sitting around. You, you have four. You, you bought the Atari 5200 with the four joystick slots, and you're all sitting there waiting for your turn. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's incredible. <laughs> Maybe it will beat that Alien game. Oh, that's true. Yes. And the keypad on this one, it was uh, mushy, just like you you say, Curtis. And it, it was it was a little bit embedded. It was deeper. So that whenever you use the joystick, the keypad really wasn't as responsive as I would give the nod maybe to an Intellivision doing it better. So lots of gripes with the joystick. And I'm with you on on that, too. And that does come into play when we rate all these games that we played so far on the show. All right, I'm not going to go through all the different game modes, all the raids we played before. Um, this is a ball and paddle game of all the games we've seen so far on Chronologically Gaming. This is the 110th ball and paddle game. Not to just say Pong, I'm just saying every video game that has a ball and paddle motif, or we call that the genre. That's how many games are out there. And by the way, 110 that we've played. We have not played standalone consoles here on Chronologically Gaming. So I'm leaving out a ton of ball and paddle games that were on those standalone Pong clones. We didn't play all of those. There's so many that are out there. <laughs> yeah, still on the same one. This is the game, the, the original pack-in for the Atari 5200. I'm actually going to say this is really close to the one we played for the Atari home computer. 
So of all the games you could be playing right now on the home console scene, um, I, I could even go as far as saying bad, but it's not really doing ball and paddle or pong style very well. It's not pushing the graphics any further than what you could say for all the games on all home consoles all over the place. But I mean, it's got big shoes to fill because the ColecoVision's out there. So um, if you have to rate all the games you could play right now on, across all home consoles here in October 1982, would you say this is a broken game? Then you'd be somewhere around the one-star range. If you think this is a bad game, then you'd be somewhere around the two-star range. If you think this is pretty average for all the games you could be playing, you'd be around the three-star range. If you think this is a pretty good, great, or an excellent game, you'd be around the four-star range. But if you think this is one of the best games you could play across all home consoles, you'd be here around the five-star range. I am actually going to rate this the same rating we rated this on the Atari home computer. I'm looking over in the chat, and I see really low ratings. So there's a one and a half, some averages. Yes, some uh, uh, so very mid-average ranges. I'm going to go around the same as well. I'm going to say two and a half stars for Super Breakout on the Atari 5200. And only because I would have said two stars, but because of it, it offered paddle control option and the joystick and the, or the analog joystick and the trackball, we'll say we'll say two and a half for now. <laughs> and I see another a two star rating. Still very low showing for the very first game on this brand new Atari system. What's Atari thinking? I don't know. All right. So after that, and for much fanfare, uh, we're going to be seeing more Atari games in November. So stay tuned when we get to November for the wider release and some other uh, hot titles and see how they they fare compared to everything else on the other home consoles. All right, let's see what our next game is. We're now going across the pond to play on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. This is Super Chess. Going from the hype console game to uh, chess. I don't know. Let's see the box for Super Chess. This is by CP Software, the second game that we've seen by CP Software. It's the 16K Super Chess. That means you don't really need that much memory to play. There's the cassette for Super Chess. This is our 111th game we played on the ZX Spectrum. That's how many are out there. Let's pop in the cassette to play Super Chess. This is by Chris Whittington. At some time in October 1982. <laughs> do we want to play the game or do we want to analyze? I believe this is also the second game by Chris Whittington, who, who is a very popular, famous developer for chess. Believe it or not. All right, so yes, I want to play. And we'll start with white because it goes first. You want to look ahead. Oh, cool. Uh, sure, I'll do look ahead one. All right, so this one is a chess game where you have to type in the coordinates that you want to play. Our move. Let's go with E2 to E4. Oh, I didn't have to put enter in. It automatically did the coordinates and the computer did, did uh, theirs. Now, I also never got a, uh, a difficulty setting because most of the time with these chess games, when you crank the difficulty up, then it takes a long time for their turn to go. <laughs> Is it really going to be super chess? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say super because we have to still type in the coordinates. We play chess games where you can move the pieces around with a, a joystick or a cursor or something like that. All right, so let's move uh, B2 to b3 yeah it it registers automatically you don't have to push enter in that's a nice touch uh this is more based on we rate these games how on the artificial intelligence how good is the chess uh, here on chronologically gaming this is our 26th chess video game that we played on the show <laughs> Yeah, and we still haven't finished a chess game yet. Uh, we played lots of chess games, but we've never finished a single chess game. And we probably won't. Analyze is a very nice feature for this one compared to all the other chess games you could play. At, at this point, the best chess you could play on any home computer would be uh, Computer Chess on the Atari home computer and Sargon Chess. So uh, of all the games you could play right now, this is pretty bare bones. Um, not really like super. <laughs> There, there's th this one's more can you push the artificial intelligence basically so i'd say of all the games you could play at this point on home computers this is actually if you were to dive deep enough and play enough chess games and video games this is fairly average i'm not going to say above average because there's some other chess games that have even more features than this but i'll say three stars average uh very well done and a good game of chess if you have the time on your zx spectrum yeah graphically it's not bad too i agree curtis all right so let's see our next release we're next going to play on the Atari home computer. We were just talking about this one. After the release of the Atari 5200, let's play some Swamp Chomp. 
I have no idea what Swamp Chomp is. But we're going to find out together. Big plans? Here's the box for Swamp Chomp. This is by John Canopa. And this is John Canopa's last game that he'll ever do. We've already seen his game Starship Duel and Moonbase IO. And if you haven't seen Moonbase IO, you need to see that one. That was really crazy because the game actually plays sound and speech from the cassette tape that plays the game. So uh, I, I have no idea what Swamp Chomp's going to be like. This one, you need 24K on either disc or cassette. Uh, right? Doesn't it look? It looks like a microorganism. It looks like a Pac-Man was a virus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I already can tell from the game. Yes, something's growing. And uh, if, you, if you can see from the front of the box, they're, they're giving you hints about what it is. We played a lot of games for the Atari home computer. And that's why that's why when we go to the Atari 5200, the, the, the newest home, uh, home console really doesn't give us that many new vibes because this is the 381st game we've played on the Atari home computer. Lots and lots of games we played for it. Let's flip this box over on the back. Deep in the swamp of muggle Dew, it's time to head for the feeding station. Avoid the alligators and other dangerous creatures that infest the swamp. Don't get smashed by low-flying objects. After you gobble up some food, you metamorphose into a crit critter able to eat your former in enemies. Eat a ghost, and your chomp time increases. Fabulous graphics, lots of action. Nice. And wait a second, two-player simultaneous. What in the world's going on here? This is by PDI. The fifth game that we've seen by PDI. What does that stand for? Program Design Incorporated. Yeah, and there's the idea what I've seen at the time with the other games. Oh, well, we haven't seen Clipper, though. You're the captain of a Clipper ship. I wonder if we're going to see Clipper soon. But there's Moonbase IO. Yeah, I would agree. Most innovative game of 1982. Electronic Games Magazine said it was. It's crazy innovative. Amazing. All right, we do have the manual to see how to play some Swamp Chomp. <laughs> How do we play? Tell us, John. There it is. You're a small, hungry gorks. <laughs> Between you and your feeding station is a swamp infested with alligators and terrifying creatures. And my goodness, look at all the, the story. We have lore for Swamp Chomp. We have to get across the swamp without being caught by a swamp critter, jump into the flying machine, travel the rest of the way to the feeding station, and then hop all the way back. <laughs> and if we get through, hot dogs await us at the feeding station. Nice. So we get some, so we are a Gorks, just so you know. And look at this, all, all this to play the game. You begin the game with seven Gorksa. <laughs> they made up some, some random entity. And we have a two-player version. Oh my goodness, two players simultaneous. If one player is in the chomping mode, they can chomp the other player. Whoa, so you can eat your partner or your friend if you're playing with another person. That's awesome. First thing you do is remove any cartridges from the computer. You plug your joystick in or two joysticks if you're playing with two people. If you have the disc version, there's how to load that. And the cassette version, how to load that. Oh, sweet. And then there's some other games. We haven't seen all of them yet by PDI, but this is the last game by John Canoba. Whoa. Yes, what does that mean? 13 boards? I'm, I'm curious, James. All right, so we have an alternate version. Let's pop in Swamp Chomp to play by John Canopa, published by PDI at some time in October, 1982. <laughs> Swamp Shop. There's so much Atari home computer games that are out there. I'm really, really excited. And I'm gonna get my second joystick ready. If it's two player. Oh, look, everyone, it's a Frogger. <laughs> it's another Frogger. This is our 28th Frogger game. That's not real Frogger, official Frogger. It's 28 games that are kind of like Frogger. <laughs> All right, so we begin the game, and if I push reset, does it do? Okay, I'm, I'm checking my option button on the, on, the, on the computer and my start button, and they don't do anything. It's just go. Okay, yeah, so we are in. If I... Uh, I can raise it up a little bit. There we go, yeah. Nice. You can see I'm on the left side of the screen. There's my Gorks. Able to move across to the other side where the feeding station is. <laughs> Those airplanes. I'm just hopping over weird things. I get some hot dogs. Oh, sweet. And then look, you can turn into a different thing and eat everything. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, what happened? Did I run out? How many, how many, how many feeds do I get? No way. So you, you do what Frogger does. You go to the other side. But when you go to the other side, you power up. And then once you power up, then you can 
eat the things that are in your way to get to the other uh, other end. All right, let's get some more hot dogs. Let's go to the top. No way. That's so cool. We played Frogger games that you go from the top to the bottom again. Look. Oh, yes, it does. Okay, so it's timed. You run out of the power-up. Make your way to this side, and then keep going and just power up to get as much as you can for points. Does that mean we go to another level after we eat all the hot dogs? What? <laughs> and if you do, you step on the wrong tile, you die like the other one. Control is very, very crisp. Digital joystick is working really well. There's not really a lot of animation on your Gorks, but take a look at the animation of everything else around here. Oh, but if your Gorks falls in the water, you die too. We have plenty of lives, though. Very, very quick. You have to just execute. Move to the next and, and go for it. Let's see if we can get this. Darn, can't get it fast enough. All my lives are going down. Well, here's what makes this special, though. I'm going to get my second joystick in here, too. Look at this. Two Gorks. If you have a second player, it's two players simultaneous Frogger, everyone. Another one. There's another... I can't believe there's two players simultaneous Frogger. And all my lives are gone, so I have to play as the second joystick. No, don't eat me. I want to power up first. Let's go get some hot dogs. There it is. And the timer... Is there a way to see my time? I don't think so. Once you get the hot dogs and power up, there's only a little bit of time left. Keep it up. Let's see if we can get these. Nope, the timing's wrong on those. There it is. Now we can make our way down. Oh, you gotta make really tight jumps, though. It's The movement is instant. As soon as you move the joystick, you go. So it's really, really, it's, it's like fast Frogger. Responsive Frogger, I should call it. We have these flying enemies. What in the world? There's these, like, giant hawks or birds that are flying around. Can you all see those black lines? <laughs> and that's it. I think that's game over, right? What is this? Look at the uh, middle of the screen. It's like making a face of something. Wow, that's pretty cool. All right, so this is very, very rare to see. Uh, Swamp Chomp is a treat. Um, Two-player simultaneous Frogger, the only other game that I think we've seen that, is, or, or I should say kind of like Frogger, was Freeway for the Atari 2600, the one by David Crane, but that's what you were chickens, but you can only go one away, up or down. There wasn't uh, freedom to move around. The, the big one this contends with is Pacific Coast Highway because that was two-player Frogger, but this one has that power-up feature, which is really, really cool. Yeah, this is a cool game. I never knew this existed. I'm going to go a higher rating for this. Uh, four stars because of the uniqueness of two-player simultaneous Frogger. The power-up feature works really well. Yeah, I'm even seeing some people say four and a half for all the games you could play. Yeah, and it, we played. We rated some other games that were four stars that were Frogger games, but they. Um, I would give this one the nod. That two-player uh, simultaneous is where it does. Yeah, I, I'd love to know. Does the level change after you go? Because it did say more screens. Got to play more of Swamp Chomp to see that. That's awesome. Too fun. All right, after Swamp Chomp, we have more games to play. What's next? Our next release takes us on the Acorn Atom. This is Swarm. Swarm. What's the box like for Swarm? Ooh. Fancy. <laughs> Program power. It's like bare bones uh, box. This is the 23rd game we played for the Acorn Atom, and the 23rd game that we played by Program Power. Imagine that. <laughs> Let's play this type in Swarm. Yep, that's it. That's all we get for the cassette. <laughs> Do we have any other artwork for Swarm? No, there's the Acorn Atom. <laughs> that's what it looks like. They made it on a Xerox machine. Man, we're gaming all over the place. All right, here we go. Let's play some Swarm on the Acorn Atom. Everyone cross your fingers and toes and make sure it loads. This is by Program Power at sometime in October 1982. <laughs> All right, we don't even need any joysticks. This is going to be keyboard only to play this. Ready, set. Uh, first of all, you got to pop in the cassette. Where's my swarm cassette? Okay, put the cassette in. Once the cassette's in, then very slowly type out the command to play because the Acorn Atom keyboard just doesn't recognize as many commands. All right, so I bet it's swarm. Swarm. 
<laughs> oh, the sweet sounds of the cassette loading. I love it. And then we run. Yes, swarm, let's play. Swarms of alien killer bees fly into the hive, dropping deadly stings. As each column fills, bees are released, their sole intention being to destroy your gun base. We have to stop them. After the queen has delivered 100 bees, she'll fly away, collect the next batch. You have three bases, gaining one more, so three lives. And there's our score for points. How do we control this thing? Okay, control key. Everyone look down at your Acorn Atom keyboard now. The adjacent key to move left and the repeat key fires your gun. All right, everyone got that? Ready, set, go. Got it. Okay, got it. Okay, I got my controls. Oh, yes. All right, first person in chat, call out the game. <laughs> I'll, I'll be short to tell you what this is. It's a variant of something we've already played before. Obviously, it's a variant of Space Invaders, but this is a variant of a variant. They're loading up. Oh, this is a little different, though. They're slowly loading up, but I don't see anything coming down. It's not going to let me shoot the mothership. Yep, just like the other one. I'm going to try anyway. Blow it up. Blow it up. They're very, very slow, slowly filling the columns. We played some other variations of this. Yes, you called it, James. Astro Invader it is. <laughs> Swarm is a variant of Astro Invader. This is the fifth Astro Invader variant we've played here on Chronologically Gaming. We're, we're not new to this concept. Originally forged from the fires of Space Invaders in the arcades. But this is different because they're, they're firing at us. They are shooting at us from the columns. The other versions we played, they fill up so fast and then they, they end up coming down and causing a little micro explosion to hit us, not shoot from the columns. Look at that. They're, fill they're filling up fast and I do have minimal firepower. I got really, really slow shots. You have to be make sure you're spot on. Don't shoot in the middle. I gotta give it to the Acorn Atom though. The the graphic quality of these games has gotten better. The, the original games we saw were, were very, very simplistic. And the last few games that were based on Galaxian shoot 'em ups or fixed shooters like this, they, they're getting better. So way to go, Acorn Atom. I don't know if you're gonna catch up though with the rest of the home computers you could be playing right now. Uh oh, what happened? It's gone. <laughs> Oh, it's going faster now. Uh-oh, yeah, we're in big trouble now. <laughs> oh, is that why it looks kind of it looks kind of similar? But this time, um, you, you obviously can pick the different color scheme. I always blame the cocoa for being so green, but you you can pick different uh, color depending on what monitor you play on. Whenever we play here on Chronologically Gaming, I switch up some of the home computers with different modes. For example, every time we play on the Acorn Atom, it's always been green. TRS-80 has always been black and white, monochrome, but you could pick different ones. Uh, you could have different monitors for different colors. What you see here is not exactly what you get. Sometimes you have different colors coming in. Uh-oh, this doesn't look good. <laughs> this, this feels like no matter what I do, it's going to be inevitable because your shot has to be per you, you You have such a slow shot, yeah. And there's no way to power it up either. Yeah, this could have been black and white too. So it flies down. Nice. <laughs> All right, there you go. A quick taste of Swarm on the Acorn Atom. It's still kicking here in October 1982. Of all the games you could play right now across all home computers, the Acorn Atom is lower end of all the computers that you could play. So I would say this one, it, it's actually all right. Uh, the firing though, it's just so low firepower. It's slower paced than other games we've seen. I'm gonna say of all the games you could play across all home computers, this one's a two and a half star game. It's, it's, it's good, it's average, but it's lower part of the average. I'm looking over in the chat. Yeah, I see twos, two and a halfs, two and a halfs or threes. Yeah, usually you wanna get your range of somewhere in between, cause this is across all home computers. Yeah, yeah, I can even see, I can see this being bad, but uh, I'll give it to the Acorn Atom. I'll call it just two and a half. It's still fun, a good shooter, and it is Astro Invader. There's only five other games that you could play out there like this one.
All right, sadly, it's time to put our video game playing on pause. Push the button on your Atari 5200 joystick, because now you can pause the game right there from the joystick. We're going to continue our quest playing every single video game across all platforms uh, all over the world. And be sure to tune in when we get to November, because then we're going to be seeing all the games uh, for the Atari 5200 that came out this year. It's not done ruining and starting the video game crash. <laughs> be, don't, be sure to don't miss that. Next time on Chronologically Gaming, we are not playing for points or for the high score because we are playing a game where we go on an adventure to get real treasure. That's it for today, and like I always say, come with me to play some video games. Come with me to 1982, where the best games go to die. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.